This is the Subaru Legacy. Now, is it Subaru's big, boring granola sedan, or is it a fun and sporty alternative to the Toyota Camrys and Honda Accords of the world? I'm looking at these muscular fender flares and all-wheel drive system, and I'm thinking it's the latter, but apparently Subaru's got some other ideas. Let's hop behind the wheel and check the tech. Now, the Legacy's dashboard is composed of some pretty cheap feeling materials when you really kind of run your fingernails across it. These plastics feel really hard and really hollow. On the bright side, though, there's a lot of variety in visual texture and color, and that makes it look a lot better when you're driving around in the car, and that makes me kind of appreciate it a little bit more. There's one place where it does kind of cheap out, and that's these two little bits of translucent blue plastic that just seem out of place in this metallic and wood dashboard. Now this limited model is going to come with a 9-speaker Harman Kardon audio system and it's got 9 speakers all around the cabin including a subwoofer in the rear parcel shelf. Now this system actually sounds pretty good. There is a lot of bass coming from that subwoofer that just really fills the cabin up. The problem is that at the flat setting, the mid-range is kind of get a little bit muddy. Fortunately, you can fix that with this multi-band EQ in the infotainment system. Now, there aren't any presets. They all come flat. You've got to set them yourself, which means it's pretty easy to mess it up even more. Fortunately, I was able to find some pretty nice presets on a Subaru user's forum. So we want to go there and check that out first before you start really getting in there and messing around. Now the navigation system is good, it gets the job done, but this entire touchscreen infotainment system is very kind of laggy. Every time I push a button, there's about a good half a second to a whole second delay between I'm pressing the button and the next screen popping up. And that can be a problem when you're driving along and you just want to tap two buttons to see where the nearest gas station is. Fortunately, you do have a full array of audio sources, including HD radio, you've got XM radio, you've got Bluetooth audio streaming and iPod connectivity. You've also got AHA radio connectivity in case you want to uh, listen to some streaming internet radio or, I don't know, listen to your Twitter feed. I don't know who actually uses that functionality. It's a little bit annoying, but it is there if you want to have access to it. Brianna Goodwin, no, no. Who's there? There is no Pandora internet radio or iHeartRadio that I saw. Those are the more popular internet radio systems. Um, I'd like to see those in this as well, but you don't actually have access to them. And if we look up here, we'll actually see the, uh, the eyes and brain of the Subaru driver assistance system. That's actually going to be their eyesight camera. And that's two cameras mounted on either side of the rear view mirror that are going to point out of the front of the vehicle and watch the road ahead. When you add that as part of a technology package, you're going to gain also a lane departure warning, you're going to gain pre-collision detection, and that's actually also going to power the adaptive cruise control system. Also, you get some pedestrian warnings and uh, cyclist warnings, so it's really good at seeing what's in front of the car and letting you know that it's there before you run into it. Now, underneath the Legacy's hood is a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed boxer engine that has like basically the two pistons punching out of either side like a boxer. Now, being horizontally opposed and flat allows Subaru to put it nice and low in the engine bay and keep the center of gravity low to the ground for better handling. Now, don't get too excited. This isn't the turbocharged 2.5 liter that you'll find under the hood of the Subaru Impreza WRX STI. This is a naturally aspirated version that puts out 173 horsepower and 174 pound-feet of torque. Still, it's a decent amount of power for a vehicle this size. Fuel economy is stated at 24, 32, with 27 miles per gallon combined being the estimate from the EPA. It's paired to a continuously variable transmission, which is kind of unfortunate. We'll talk about that more in a second. In turn, that transmission is going to send power to Subaru's trademark symmetrical all-wheel drive system that's going to give this vehicle a little bit more sure-footedness when the weather gets slippery and wet. Let's hop behind the wheel and see exactly what I mean about why that transmission is the worst possible choice for a car like this. Off the line, it's not bad. You do, you know, get off the line pretty quickly. The problem is when you're cruising around at low speeds, 25 miles per hour, 45 miles per hour, those speeds that you do in the city and then need to accelerate. You need to get the transmission to jump down in ratio so that you can actually take off. The problem is that when you do that, the transmission and the engine, they just don't really want to work very well together. They basically kind of rubber band and you get a lot of revving from the engine while it's up in the power band, while the transmission's just kind of waiting to catch up. Of course, if you're a laid-back driver and you 
really are all about maximum fuel efficiency. This transmission is more fuel efficient by a couple of miles per gallon than the manual shifted option. You do have a manual shift mode and paddle shifters, but the shifts that you get from the paddle shifts are even slower than you would have gotten from a traditional torque converter transmission or if you just left the CVT to do its own thing. The 2014 Subaru Legacy 2.5i Limited, that's the one that we've got right here, is going to start at 26195 Now there's one option package you can add that adds all of the tech that we talked about. The iSight camera with its driver aid tech and the in-dash technology. That's going to be $4,040. As your destination charges, that'll bring you to an as-tested price of $31,030. Now, that's going to get you about 32 miles per gallon on the highway, and it's a pretty good price, even if it's not fun. But if you really care about driving thrills, save a couple of bucks and get the manual transmission.